The Battle of Sirte 2016 refers to the battle that started in the spring of 2016, in the region of Sirte, Libya, between the Islamic State of Iraq and the Levant ISIL, and the Loyalist Forces of the Government of National Accord GNA, backed by United States of America. ISIL forces had captured Sirte one year earlier, during the previous battle. The conflict for Sirte was described as ISIL's last stand. In Libya, the latter portion of this battle was concurrent with the Battle of Mosul in Iraq, the Battle of al-Bab in northern Syria, and the Raqqa Campaign by the Syrian Democratic Forces, on ISIL's de facto capital in Syria. The offensive Topic. GNA advance on CERT, initial gains, and stalemate The offensive on CERT launched on 12 May 2016, under the name al Bunyan al Masus, variously translated as impenetrable wall or solid foundation. Fighting took place east of Astada, around 80 km 50 miles south of Misrata. On 16 May, GNA military forces recaptured Abu Ghraim from ISIL militants. The next day, the GNA took control over the Al Wishka district, 25 km from Abu Ghraim, and eventually reached nearly 50 km from Sirte. On 19 May, an ISIL suicide bomber attacked GNA forces, 90 km west of Sirte, killing 30 soldiers and wounding 50. In late May, pro-GNA military forces seized many locations near the city of Sirte from ISIL, including the Sirte power station, and advanced on the town of Jarif to the south of Sirte. Also in late May, the eastern front of Sirte saw action. The Petroleum Facilities Guard PFG captured the towns of Bin Jawad and Nufalia from ISIL. On 4 June, GNA forces captured the Gardabir Air Base, 10 to 20 kilometers south of Sirte center. However, ISIL recaptured the airbase the following day. On 8 June, GNA fighters entered CERT for the first time after capturing a bridge on the city's western outskirts. The next day, fighting was concentrated near the Wagadougou Conference Hall, where ISIL held religious instruction sessions, and GNA forces managed to surround the hall. Meanwhile, some ISIL fighters started retreating from CERT, while PFG forces advanced within 70 km to the east of CERT and reached the town of Harawa. On 10 June, the GNA captured two barracks, a bridge, and an intersection in CERT. In addition, the Libyan Navy secured CERT's coast and blocked potential escape routes for ISIL via the sea. The following day, street fighting continued to rage in CERT and heavy clashes took place around the Ouagadougou complex, with GNA forces hitting with artillery fire ISIL positions around the conference center. On 12 June, GNA forces secured both CERT's port, airport and a residential area in the east of the city, while fighting was continuing two kilometers from the conference hall. ISIL fighters in the city retreated into a densely built-up area, with snipers taking up positions against the advancing GNA forces. ISIL also started using waves of suicide bombers to stall approaching GNA forces. Three ISIL suicide car bombers targeted a field hospital in the west of Sirte, as well as two positions of GNA fighters, including at the Abu Hadi roundabout in the southeast of the city. On 13 June, the GNA advance in Sirte slowed as they reached the residential areas near the city center. ISIL fighters were holed up in the central and northern part of Sirte and a GNA counterattack against ISIL positions at the town's main western entrance, after the suicide bombings the previous day, was repelled. On 16 June, a suicide attack at a police station in Abu Ghraim, at a crossroad between Sirte and Misrata, killed 10 soldiers and wounded 7. Also, a six-man GNA scouting team in Sirte was killed and their bodies paraded by ISIL. On 21 June, GNA forces secured areas in the 700 neighborhood, south of the city center, and gained ground to the west of the center of Sirte in the heavily damaged District No. 2. Other gains included, the Ben Hamel Mosque, the electricity headquarters and the radio station. 
During the advance, the GNA positioned themselves within a kilometer from the conference center. Meanwhile, GNA fighters withdrew from the port, although they still controlled the port road, due to heavy ISIL sniper fire from a nearby hotel. Some 400 to 500 ISIL fighters were operating in the port area. During the advances, GNA fighters suffered heavy casualties with 39 being killed and another 140 wounded. Another report put the number of GNA dead at more than 40. On the 28th of June, the British SBS engaged in a 30-minute gun battle near Sirte with ISIL forces, killing 20 to 30 ISIL militants, three of whom were British. On the 1st of July, ISIL fighters were driven out of the 100 and 700 neighborhoods, and GNA forces had surrounded the conference hall. ISIL fighters were also still holed up at a nearby hospital, with snipers and landmines slowing the GNA's progress. The next day, the GNA captured the city center, or at least part of it, as well as the harbor. By 7 July, Mergani Badawi al-Bashir, nicknamed Abu al-Harith, was killed by a drone strike. A leading local ISIL commander and a prominent Sudanese preacher, Mergani's death was regarded as heavy blow to ISIL by experts. On the 9th of July, a mass grave was discovered by GNA forces on a farm on the southern edge of Sirte. The next day, an ISIL ammunition store was hit in the city center by ground fire, while more air strikes hit other ISIL positions. In turn, ISIL fired grad missiles at GNA positions in the 1st, 2nd and 3rd residential districts and the university campus. On the 15th of July, heavy clashes erupted around the conference center leaving 21 GNA soldiers dead and 139 wounded. During the fighting, three ISIL suicide car bombers, including a Libyan and an Egyptian, hit GNA forces in an unsuccessful counterattack. GNA fighters managed to enter the conference complex, but had not been able to capture it. Some ten days later, the GNA captured the largest ISIL bomb factory in Sirte, a hotel in the eastern part of the city, part of the Dollar neighborhood, and the security headquarters. <laughs> U.S. airstrikes, GNA breakthrough, and ISIL territory shrinks On 1 August, at the request of the GNA, the United States Air Force and United States Marine Corps Harriers launched from USS Wasp LHD-1, and began to bomb CERT, targeting ISIL tanks and vehicles in support of the GNA forces. The attacks put further pressure on the estimated 1,000 ISIL fighters who remained in the city center. The strikes hit two T-72 tanks, a fighting position and two construction vehicles. The next day, an ISIL rocket launcher and a heavy equipment excavator were also hit. During these airstrikes, another Sudanese ISIL commander, Qasai al Jaili, was reportedly killed, though other sources said he had died of illness or wounds. Al Jaili had achieved prominence by masterminding the escape of four assassins of U.S. diplomat John Granville from the Koba prison, Khartoum, in 2009. By 4 August, Dollar was secured. On 7 August, GNA troops showed a small former ISIL training camp with an assault course, along with foxholes, that was taken by GNA forces. On 8 August, the GNA seized an area of guest houses close to the Ouagadougou Conference Center. Two days later, GNA forces took control of the Ouagadougou Center, Sirts Ibn Sina Hospital and the university campus. During the fighting, a GNA fighter jet was shot down over CERT with both pilots missing. By the 11th of August 70% of CERT was under GNA control. At this point, the GNA started launching incursions into neighborhoods 1 and 3, two of the districts that were still is held. The following day, bombardment commenced of neighborhoods 1 and 2. Meanwhile, it was confirmed the GNA also took control of the Amina Hotel, the Police Academy Building and the Al Giza Military Zone. McMardas On 12 August, the GNA announced the beginning of the final battle, dubbed McMardas, to completely capture CERT. On the next day, the city's radio station and the Indian 
Buildings were captured by the GNA as they advanced into neighborhood 2. During the fighting, there was an attempted ISIL suicide bomb attack against the advancing forces. Three days later, pro-GNA militias captured the neighborhood 2 district and started advancing into neighborhood 1. During the fighting for neighborhood 2, ISIL fighters launched nine suicide bombings that killed nine GNA fighters and wounded 82. Following the capture of this area, only neighborhoods 1 and 3 remained is held. On 18 August, ISIL fighters from outside the city attacked GNA fighters at a rallying area and a checkpoint, killing at least 10 GNA fighters and wounding 20. Another attack by three IS suicide bombers was prevented and the attackers killed. Between 21 and the 22nd of August, pro-GNA militias captured the Rybat Mosque, the city's biggest and main mosque, as well as the internal security building that was used as an IS prison, a courthouse, the Al Naga district and Dubai Street. During their advances, the GNA discovered a major hoard of gold, money and weapons inside the IS security headquarters. In one room, there were boxes of gold, jewelry, wads of Tunisian currency, rifles and shotguns, computers, radios and cartons of telephone cards. On 25 August, GNA's spokesman for the operation Mohamed al Ghasri stated that ISIL had withdrawn from most of the neighborhood 3 into a small part of the neighborhood as well as the northern half of neighborhood 1. On 28 August, the GNA suffered heavy casualties in fighting while advancing into neighborhood 1 and 3. Five car bombs were deployed by the militants in the battle, though at least one was destroyed before it could reach its target. Hospitals in CERT reported that 35 GNA fighters died and 150 more were wounded. U.S. and Libyan warplanes bombarded ISIL-held neighborhoods in CERT overnight. The Cordoba Mosque which ISIL had renamed to Abu Musab Zarqawi Mosque was captured on the same day along with other areas of neighborhood 3. GNA militias announced the next day that they had completely captured neighborhood 1 with ISIL still controlling half of neighborhood 3. Ten GNA fighters were killed during the clashes while 12 were wounded. On 3 September, pro GNA militias launched an offensive on the last ISIL held areas of CERT and stated they had captured several buildings, including two banks and a hotel. An attempted suicide bombing by ISIL was also thwarted by the militias. Seven to ten pro GNA fighters were reported to be killed, while 30 to 60 were wounded in the clashes. On 5 September, the media wing of Al Bunyan Al Masus reported that it had captured ISIL pockets in the Giza neighborhood, including a Widder Bank branch. On 6 September, the pro GNA forces captured the buildings of the Civil Court and the Savings Bank in neighborhood 3, in addition to an ammunition stockpile belonging to the militants containing mines, explosives, and warheads. New stalemate On 8 September, pro-GNA forces stated that ISIL was using civilians as human shields which was delaying the advancement of pro-GNA fighters. Some days later, they also pointed out that the slipping away of some militants as pro-GNA militias advanced was behind the delay. There were concerns that all of them hadn't been cleared behind the lines as some militants had carried out attacks on pro-GNA troops behind them. On 14 the September, four foreigners and two Libyans were freed from ISIL's prisons in CERT. The foreigners included two North Koreans and two Indians. Meanwhile, AFRICOM carried out airstrikes against ISIL, hitting six positions of the group and a car bomb. By 16 September 15 people including nine Libyans, three Koreans, two Indians and a Palestinian had been freed. On 18 September, Al Bunyan Al Masus launched an offensive against the last ISIL holdouts in CERT. During the clashes, two car bombs were destroyed, before they could reach pro-GNA fighters. Pro-GNA militias stated they had captured the Social Security Headquarters, an ISIL field hospital, Fatah School, Grand Mosque and a workshop for manufacturing explosives. Three pro-GNA fighters were killed, while two ISIL commanders, Hassan al-Karami and Walid al-Furjan, were confirmed to have been killed in the clashes. Clashes renewed on of September, with ten militants and nine pro-GNA fighters being killed. 
Three car bombs were destroyed before reaching their targets, while the spokesman for Misratan militias stated that the militants had been cut off from each other and surrounded in two different areas. Misrata's Central Hospital reported on 23 September that 10 pro-GNA fighters had been killed while 65 were injured during clashes from 22 to 23 September. As the situation for the besieged ISIL forces became increasingly dire, media reports started to emerge that ISIL began to employ female fighters as snipers in an extremely unusual move for the militant group. Between 25 and the 26th of September, AFRICOM carried out airstrikes on an ISIL supply point and other positions around the 600 buildings. Neighborhood. On 2 October 2016, a group of ISIL militants, who attempted to escape the city, were killed. The same day, an attack by ISIL militants on a GNA checkpoint from outside Sirte, near Gardabir Air Base, in a possible attempt to lift the siege of the city, was repelled. Overall, 80 ISIL and 8 GNA fighters were reported killed during the clashes, while another 57 GNA fighters were wounded. A Dutch photojournalist, Jeroen Erlmans, who was covering the government-backed offensive against ISIL, also died due to ISIL sniper fire. <laughs> ISIL pocket split On 7 October 2016, GNA forces managed to separate the last ISIL-controlled areas in CERT, after taking control of the dividing line between the 600 neighborhood and the C View Giza apartment buildings. The control of the dividing line also cut ISIL aid routes. During their advances, the GNA discovered secret underground tunnels connecting the besieged areas in the city. During the day's fighting, the senior ISIL leader Abu al-Barar al-Masri was killed on the front line in Giza neighborhood, along with two ISIL snipers. On 9 October, GNA forces advanced across two streets in the 600 neighborhood. The media officer of the Misratan militias stated that they had completely encircled the neighborhood. Two female militants reportedly surrendered along with their children, in fear of being used as suicide bombers. Another media official reported that pro-GNA fighters had also advanced into the Al Manara neighborhood. As of the 12th of October, the GNA air force and artillery were intermittently bombarding ISIL positions in the 600 neighborhood. U.S. airstrikes were also being conducted. Overall, between 9 and the 15th of October, at least 22 pro-GNA fighters were killed in clashes, while more than half a dozen militants also died. On 14 October, street-to-street -street fighting, involving tanks and armored vehicles, took place in the Giza neighborhood. On 16 October, the GNA captured the Cambo al neighborhood, including tunnels and a field hospital, and advanced several hundred meters into Giza neighborhood. On the 22nd of October, pro-GNA militias announced they had captured the 600 neighborhood, leaving only the Giza area under ISIL control, although the last apartment blocks in the 600 neighborhood were not cleared until the next day. Topic. Attack on the last ISIL-held district On 26 October, GNA militias launched an attack on the Giza neighborhood by shelling it with heavy artillery, managing to take control of several residential blocks by the following day. In the fighting between 19 and 26 October 22 GNA fighters and more than 22 ISIL militants were killed, while 24 foreign hostages were freed by the GNA. Additionally, 24 civilians crossed the front line into GNA territory, while seven unidentified and burned bodies were found. On 31 October, the GNA launched a new attack on the Giza neighborhood from the seaside. By this point, about 100 ISIL militants were reportedly left, holding out in the city. The United States also ended its bombing campaign on ISIL in Sirte, after carrying out a total of 367 airstrikes. The United States Department of Defense stated that airstrikes would be resumed if they were needed. On the 2nd of November, GNA forces gained a new foothold in the last ISIL-controlled area of the city and advanced further on the 6th of November. 
During the fighting, the GNA freed 14 civilians, while a senior GNA commander was killed. On 9 November, after more advances by the GNA, only a few ISIL snipers were estimated to be left in the area, still under their control. On 12 November, the GNA stated that it was delaying the final assault because it would result in intense street to street fighting. They also stated that they were taking a step-by-step -step approach to limit casualties among their ranks, as well as the civilians held as human shields by ISIL. On 16 November, GNA advanced to control the 20 Street. The next day, they tightened the siege on the group and found bodies of 11 militants, likely killed in recent clashes. They also destroyed a car bomb and freed three women along with a number of children. By this point, ISIL territory in the city had been reduced to just one square kilometer. About 400 ISIL militants, who had managed to escape CERT since the beginning of the offensive, were conducting guerrilla attacks behind the front line. The GNA advanced further on 21 November, capturing a fortified school. They seized a number of barricaded houses on the next day. The United States also resumed its airstrikes on ISIL at this point. Advancing GNA fighters were delayed by booby traps and mines. Some GNA units had to be pulled back from the narrow front line and were reserved for relieving other fighters. By the 22nd of November, only 50 militants were remaining in a few dozen properties, still controlled by ISIL. Between 22 and 24 November, the U.S. conducted more than a dozen airstrikes, hitting 61 ISIL positions. GNA captured 25 houses in addition to a stash of arms on 24 November. On 26 November, GNA managed to take control of around 30 buildings, facing heavy resistance. During the clashes, two suicide bombers targeted them, while a woman, whom they were trying to provide a safe passage, started firing on them instead, before being killed. By the 1st of December, the territory under ISIL control was reduced to around 50 buildings in the area of two city blocks. By this point, the GNA also closed off all pathways for the militants to escape. Only families, women and children were allowed to exit the area. On 2 December, several women, who pretended to surrender, blew themselves up, killing four GNA fighters and wounding 38 others. ISIL had also recaptured a few buildings. The campaign was temporarily halted to preserve the lives of civilians, while a senior militant was arrested and four others surrendered. Forty-two women and children were rescued on the next day, while six militants, who tried to escape, were arrested. The GNA captured nine buildings on 4 December, with ten women and children leaving ISIL held area, while two militants, who tried to escape, were arrested. On 5 December, GNA spokesman Rida Issa claimed that the GNA was in control of Giza neighborhood, while another spokesman, Mohammed al Ghasri, stated that they were besieging the remaining militants. There were premature reports that CERT had been fully captured by GNA. GNA fighters later confirmed that they still hadn't fully captured Giza neighborhood, with ISIL still controlling around 10 buildings. By 6 December, ISIL was in control of less than 10 houses, with the GNA trying to neutralize a small number of militants still present in the area and rescuing a group of women and children. CERT was completely captured by pro GNA militias later in the day. The last holdouts were defeated after heavy clashes earlier in the day and a combing operation on the last three ISIL-held buildings where they were barricaded. The last nine militants surrendered to GNA during the night, along with ten women and children. By the end of the offensive, the United States had carried out 495 airstrikes against the group in CERT. 21 women and 31 children were released from ISIL-held territory. A total of 12 fighters were killed in the clashes on the last day. Topic: US involvement. On the 1st of August 2016, the Pentagon announced the US military effort to support the Libyan government against ISIL would be code-named Operation Odyssey Lightning. Between August and December 2016, U.S. forces launched 495 precision strikes in and around CERT. 
On 20 December, AFRICOM formally announced the end of its military operations to help GNA capture CERT. In September 2017, the U.S. Africa Command announced that 495 precision airstrikes were carried out and 800 to 900 ISIL fighters were killed during the operation in CERT between 1 August and 19 December 2016. Topic. Aftermath GNA spokesman Riddarissa stated after capture of CERT that they will continue with their military operations in order to securing the area around the city, with Libyan officials as well those of other countries concerned that a number of militants who had escaped before the battle or during it may mount an insurgent campaign from outside the city. Jean-Yves Le Drian, Defense Minister of France, meanwhile praised the pro-GNA militias for defeating ISIL. Celebrations erupted among the pro-GNA militias after capture of the city. Another spokesman Armes Hadia stated that while it was the last major battle, it wasn't the end of military operations or a declaration of liberation. After the defeat of ISIL, the Central Committee for Municipal Council Elections CCMCE scheduled mayoral elections for the city on 12 December 2016 at the local government ministry in Tripoli, with CCMCE's head Otman Gajiji supervising it. The military intelligence chief, Ismail al-Shukri later in a televised statement denied that diehard militants had escaped the city. He also accused regional countries as well as countries that have political and economic interests in Libya, of sponsoring ISIL inside the country. The Grand Mufti of Libya, Sadiq al Ghariani, praised victory over ISIL, while criticizing and accusing the United Nations Support Mission in Libya UNSMIL, of neglecting the victory. He called for UNSMIL to be replaced. Most of the city was destroyed in the battle, with unexploded explosives strewn across the streets, with key services and vital infrastructure also destroyed. The Red Crescent found 230 bodies confirmed to be of ISIL militants, as well as 36 other bodies in former positions of the group. Bunyan Masus Operations Room stated, on the other hand, that 483 bodies were recovered. Mukhtar al-Madani was elected as the mayor on 12 December. Ahmed Abu Sharma was appointed as the military governor by Bunyan Masus on 14 December. GNA's Prime Minister Fayez al-Sarraj officially announced the end of military operations and liberation of CERT on 18 December. UN's envoy to Libya Martin Kobler termed the ISIL defeat as a major step towards ending terrorism in the country and called for national reconciliation. On 18 January 2017, USB-2 bombers bombed two ISIL camps to the south of Sirte, killing 90 ISIL militants. Topic. See also. Islamic State of Iraq and the Levant in Libya ISIL occupation of Derna Battle of Benghazi 2014-2017 Battle of Derna 2018 Battle of Baghuz Forkani List of wars and battles involving ISIL Timeline of ISIL-related events Timeline of the Libyan Civil War 2014-present